Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Velocity 2016 in Santa Clara. I'm here with Mike and Mike from Cisco. How are you guys doing? We're good. Really good. Surrounded by Mike's. So last names? I'm Mike Cohen. Mike Dvorkin. Okay. And you gave a keynote this morning. Yes, I did. And if, if you had three main takeaways for that keynote, what would they be? So basically, the way we're looking at the problem and that was addressed in the keynote is, first of all, we should not think about what other people are doing. Right. It's basically we need to think about layers of abstractions where others on whom we rely provide services to us in a way that's really consumable by us, like our code, our services, without any sort of need to understand the inner working of the services that you provide to us. Right. So that can be achieved through multiple abstractions, um, including like ones driven by policies. Right. And policies can basically describe things in ways that do not really necessarily require you to understand the underlying infrastructural or like structural detail, but allow you to describe your needs and how those needs you think need to be satisfied and like how you impose various constraints on, on the service that you rely on, right? Another thing that's very important is like since you have l large uh, development organizations uh, that comprise of multiple teams uh, cooperating together, like delivering the application, you need to start thinking about how to eliminate the general linear dependencies that teams have um, like with, w on each other. And the less you expose and the more abstraction you provide, the less detail you spill onto your consumers, the sort of easier the collaboration becomes because now you can change things under the hood without like sending ripple effects and like spreading this unnecessary knowledge onto everybody. Yeah. And that's, towards out that a big deal, right? And it saves people a lot of time if you do it correctly. And then third thing is like being independent of any environment, right? So like if I'm a developer and I'm writing code, why do I have to write code for like running on Amazon versus like Google Cloud or on my on premises, right? All this stuff can be thought of as like, you know, kind of conditions that can be thought of as like, you know, like, like assigned to a specific jurisdiction or specific cloud or specific environment, right? And any sort of like ap application logic or or the metadata that surrounds it should be completely devoid of any like specific architecture specific stuff, right? And this architecture specific stuff can be driven driven through uh, operational and governance policies, right? That are asynchronously defined and can be circumstantially enforced like in, the, in, the, in places where an application lands as needed. So Cisco and all the devices you make and all the infrastructure you guys have and you're at Velocity now. What what is your your particular interest in in this whole event here? What what is about Velocity that's good for Cisco? Sure. Well, so you know, Velocity conference has been going on for a long time, and it's in our right in our backyard now at Cisco, right? Our corporate campus is right, right around. You know, yeah, yeah. It's literally right around the corner. Yeah. Um, you know, and as we looked across our, pro our product line, and you know, a lot of the work we were doing are, again around policy, um, but also within the data center and software defined networking. Now in our analytics products and some of our cloud, you know, cloud uh, deployment solutions, you know, we really saw that you know we were broadening out behind you know beyond just reaching a networking uh, you know a, a networking audience, and our buyers were really more general kind of you know DevOps engineers or even you know our, you know the value we we're adding reach out to the application teams as well. So we wanted to start going to different events where we could actually talk to people, building the applications, worrying about performance, so they can understand what we're doing and how the benefits that we bring in our products will actually affect them in their lives as well. So the saying of every company is a software company is now true with Cisco as well? Oh, well Cisco's always been a software company, right? Look at the protocols and like stuff that's running in the boxes. Right. It's just the way it was sold in the, the packaging yeah. format. Yes, right? yes, yes. But the cool thing about this conference is like you actually get to talk to a lot of practitioners, right? These are the people who are now like sort of consuming technology, right? It used to be that the, it was the ops people, like, and the application people are sort of like so tossing right. it over the fence. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like, you know, it's, it's all about the developers, right? And that's... And then what about the performance? So it, it, is it, because I'm wondering about that fence still. There's the DevOps uh -huh. and that, that seems to be working better, but is the performance over the fence for a different group or is that also combined. Yeah, well, so we're seeing a lot of that change, right? Those organizational boundaries that existed, and it used to be very clear, we built networking boxes and we could sell them to the networking team, and they would provide the network and all would be well and good. And that world is really morphing really, really quickly, and we're seeing that in a lot of our customers where you know, they're reorganizing and they have DevOps teams, and the teams handle, you know, uh, you know, handle solutions end to end. Um, so now we're selling to the, you know, we're selling at all points of that chain, right? And you know, we actually tailor our solutions 
to those environments. So we have to engage with, you know, with people at all the different points as well now. Excellent. So if you fast forward 12 months from now and kind of predict where Cisco will be in this space, the performance and DevOps space, what would you say you guys will be doing 12 months from now? So a lot of the stuff that we do already, right? We sell, we, we make really good gear. We make really good networking boxes. Those things will still work, right? You need networks at the end of the day. Definitely. And they, they will still run the same protocols, right? It's how you do the configuration and the agility of, and, and how you provide the agile change of the network environments is where it's going to be, right? So how do you provide various means of policy control for the networks? How do you open all of these interfaces to the developers? So like, you know, or DevOps, so like they can basically reconfigure things on the fly as a reflection of the state of the application. But also how do you provide this like feedback loop, right, with analytics and various like monitoring systems, management systems, and how you combine it all together. So it like your data center and then your DevOps organization becomes like this living organism. Right, that's not just like pushing things in, but there is also a feedback loop that tells you like what's going on and like tells you how things are doing in this environment. So it's an adapting living organism, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So like you need to, you need to be, you, like the change never stops. Right. right. That's basically the uh, the the problem, right? Like if in the old world, like you deploying the VM, it, you're sort of done. You like punch some holes in the firewall, and everything is peachy creamy, right? Nowadays you don't know what's going to come five minutes from now. Like, you don't know what's going to come five seconds from now. Like, the reality sort of like never converges on the final state. It's always in a transition. So Cisco needs to, and is evolving a lot of the interfaces and a lot of the thinking of how to basically survive in this world. So a bit of insight you can actually see there. So last week we announced our Tetrician Analytics product, which is actually, you know, the idea was we're going to start putting sensors in all your hosts and in your network, and we can actually start using the network as the source of truth to understand how your applications are performing, how they're interacting, and all the concepts that you know, might get brought to bear around policy, we can actually learn those things dynamically from all these sensors we have. And we can start bringing that data out and showing, you know, showing it to our users, not just networking teams, but also to the application teams, so they can start derive, you know, you're deriving new insights around that. So that's one of the directions Cisco's making a major move, and you're going to see that over the next year. As a user, a consumer, do I get to opt into the kinds of sensors that I'm being sensed with? You so know, like Amazon Echo and Dot, are they listening to all my conversations, or? Yeah, so, w so the, the data we're gathering with tools like this is purely around network data. Who, you know, who's talking to who? Um, in terms of pieces of your application, Jeez. right? So we're not looking inside, we're not looking, you know, it's not deep packet inspection information around, you know, what did you say in your email? This is, you know, you have an, you know, an email app talking to a backend server. You know, we'll understand those kind of interactions. And how many messages went through, how many, how messages, many failed. You know, how much yeah. latency did it, you yeah. know, was produced in that interaction. So the security and kind of privacy concerns around it matter, matter a lot less. It's more that how is the application back end and front end put together and how can you optimize those kind of things. Right, and how do you enforce And like, you know, it's, it's all about like, you know, when you run a very large scale environment, how do you provide this like, security blanket uh, in a way that doesn't require anybody to like go and manually introspect whatever is going on, right? You, things change so fast that you basically have to almost like react with the with a, with a speed of light and basically do things in response to that so you're not open, opening yourself up for the attacks. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting world coming up in the next few years and I think you guys are right at the center of it. So um, we look forward to that journey that you guys are on and uh, look forward to future conversations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks.